Alright, so today we're doing part, um, part, I don't even know what this, I've, wait, I've made way too many videos with this thing, I lost count with what, what number we're at, so we're doing the next chapter of the two-speed, fully suspension, 670 off-road go-kart. Now, I'll admit, last video of this project was a little bit rushed, I had to leave for out of town, and I kind of just threw a bunch of stuff together and called it a video, so... Now that I'm actually, you know, I'm back in town and able to spend a little bit more time with this, I'm starting to look at it and really the only way to really make this work is to rearrange almost everything on this rear swing arm. That's like the only way I can figure out how to make this work. So last night I was able to install the rear suspension, these shocks, at a 45 degree angle. The reason I did this is because last video of this project where I installed the semi-independent rear suspension, I tried to make the suspension softer by putting the, the shocks closer to the anchoring point and still I put it as close as possible and still they were just incredibly too strong for this suspension. So yes, this go-kart is heavy, yes, this weighs a lot, but all that weight is not on the suspension. This is All the suspension really has to hold is the top of the suspension right here and my weight, which is really not that much. So all the weight of the engine is over the rear axle. It's not dead weight anymore because it's in the middle of the, of the axle and the anchoring point, so I believe it's not dead weight anymore. Um, but it's still, you know, not enough to make any difference with the suspension, the way it's set up. So last video of this project, I said that n nothing I do will make the suspension work. And a lot of you guys said in the comments how what I need to do is put the suspension shock at a 45 degree angle and that will make it work and it'll, you know, be softer, have more travel. So I did. I installed the suspension at a 45 degree angle and let's see if the suspension is any softer. Now I can't really jump on this thing because it's still only tacked together, but I can tell you right now, the suspension is not any softer. So unfortunately, this just still doesn't work. The suspension just doesn't work like that. Um, you know, if the suspension was going to work like this, if these shocks were light enough, the way it's set up right now is the more it travels, 
the, the softer the suspension will be. So I'm not going to try to explain why that is. I know I'm going to... I know I'm going to have comments saying how that's wrong. There's always comments like that, but just the way it's set up just is not going to work. These shocks are just way too strong for this setup. I just, I just wanted to put it at a 45 just to see if it would work, to see if you guys are right. Unfortunately, it's not right. So I do have softer shocks. I do have some. Unfortunately, they're on the dual engine go-kart. Um, I know, for those of you who are wondering what's happening with that project, I'm waiting for parts for, you know, to finish the next video of this, of the dual engine project. So while I'm waiting for those parts, let me actually take the front suspension shocks off that, put it on here, and uh, see if they'll work. So believe it or not, this, the weight that the suspension has to hold up is really not that much. I mean, most of the weight is over the rear axle, most of the engine's weight is over the rear axle, so really, you know, the weight that the suspension has to hold up is not that much. It's most of, you know, a little bit of the engine, a tiny bit of the rear swing arm, most of this, which is really not that much, and all my weight. So really, doesn't have to hold up that much. So. I'm gonna try and use um, just only two of these shocks. I still wanna have some decent travel, so I'm gonna be putting them pretty close to right here. If not, I'll double them up like this and see if this works. So I don't wanna have too much travel to where the engine hits something because I am limited with space in this tiny frame. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put one here one over there and see if that works. If not, I'm going to take the other two off and, you know, double them up just like that. So here's where we find out if this new shock setup actually works. Now, I know I did. I used two of them. I had to just because if I put one of them over here, it would have been, you know, not not that much suspension. And uh, if I hit bumps, it would have bottomed out. So I just decided to go with this, and it seemed to make sense. So let's see if it finally works. Yeah, there we go. That's so I haven't installed the Panhard Panhard bar, I believe that's what it's called, yet, but yeah, that is a lot better of suspension. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately it doesn't um you know I like my suspension to rest like in uh 25% compressed. That's the way I like it to rest, just because when you hit a bump it's not topping out, you know, it's, it just makes it for a much more comfortable run. But at least this finally, 
finally works. Now, um, I'm probably gonna have to end the video here just because it's it's late. I need to. I ran out of um. I ran out of argon, and it's late. It's actually Sunday night. I normally like to upload these videos on Sunday, but this video just took kind of forever to make. I was originally um, planning on a different video for this week, but you know those the parts that I'm waiting for they just never showed up, and I'm still waiting for them. So who knows how long that's going to be for that video. That's kind of why I had to just all of a sudden just start working on this thing. I think it's been like three or four days maybe that I've been working on this, trying to make a video with this. But um, yeah, finally, finally trying to finish this project. Um, in case you guys are wondering why I'm using, if you guys can see in the background, why I'm using the Lincoln Electric 140 instead of my 210. My brand new welder, my brand new... 210 awesome welder crapped out on me. It's not that big a deal. It's the, the electric solenoid, I believe it is, um, that lets gas flow when you pull the trigger. I think it just quit. I was welding and all of a sudden, just, you know, just porous and everything. I checked, there was no gas flow. Everything else was working. Took the machine apart. The wires aren't burnt. They're still connected. So I Throw it back together and it still didn't work. There was that white button that I'm not really sure what it does. I kept pressing that. That didn't do anything. So tomorrow I'm going to be taking that thing back to where I bought it and see if they can fix it. Hopefully they can. And um, also get a new bottle because I ran out of argon. So anyway, I have to end the video here. Now I have to thank Go Power Sports for sending me all the parts I use for this project. Almost everything you see here, I'll be leaving links to all this stuff in the description below. Go check all that out. But yeah, I gotta end the video here. Follow me on Instagram. I have a link in the description below to that. But yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe and have a nice day. Alright, so today we're doing a uh, part. Part, uh. <sighs> I don't know what part we're doing. <laughs> Uh, this, the next chapter. Wow, that white balance has turned up a lot. But I have to, just so you can see the stuff inside, just because it's light outside, dark in here. It's awesome filming in here, just because everything's just shadows and darkness and way too bright, way too dark, and then backlit, and then not enough backlit, and stuff like that. It's awesome to film around here. Very easy. Okay, here we go.